Hi guys, been a while, but I'm back with Today in 10 or Less. Last week, as you were wrapping up your writer's process and publishing everything, uh, I promised you that we would be leading somewhere. I promised you we'd be leading somewhere. And today, you got a little bit of a taste of it. See, I had you respond, first and foremost, when you came into class, we had another fire starter. And it was, is it easier to read a book or to watch a movie? And I had you explain. Now... I got a lot of mixed responses, but overwhelmingly, the majority of you said, Yeah, Mr. Cass, watching movies is way easier. I don't have to do anything. I don't have to do any- What? Uh? You don't have to do anything? Are you sure? Are you sure you just sit back and let a movie happen to you? Because I don't think you do. I don't think you do at all. As we started discussing this as a class, you started to see what I meant by that. See, because a lot of what we were talking about, it boiled down to images, time, and amount of thinking. Well, remember, images are created one way or another. Whether they're created for you, or you create them yourself. Whether it's a movie or a book, it still revolves around images. Remember, if I order a pizza, and it delivers, it gets delivered to me, or I go and get it, either way I still have to eat it to make it worthwhile, right? No matter who's delivering it, I still got to eat it. I still have to put in the effort. Think about that, right? The other thing, time. It takes so much time to read, Mr. Cass. Mr. Cass, it takes so much time to read. Well, then I reminded you that all of us have been to hour and a half long movies that were boring. And yet all of us have watched two and a half or three hour movies that were like, What's going to happen next? We're so stoked every second of every... It's about how the time is filled, not necessarily about the time. That's number two. Number three. Okay. This whole business of I don't have to think when I watch a movie? Uh, yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. If you... It's October. Let's talk about scary movies. If you've ever said, don't go in there, you've made a prediction. Well, one of the things that a great reader does that makes predictions, they use information that's available to them to predict what's going to happen in the future. If you've ever sat in a movie and gone, oh, the same thing happened to me, the same thing happened to me, or, oh, that's just like my cousin, or, oh, that, you're making connections. Well, isn't that what a good reader does? Make connections? I'm telling you, you've got the skills of a reader. You just have been using them to watch movies. But that's not surprising. I told you guys in class that I'm not very good at tennis. And you know why? Because I don't play tennis. I play maybe twice a year. That's it. Well, that's why I'm not very good. I've been playing soccer since I was three years old. I still play three times a week. I'm really good at soccer. It's not surprising that I have a higher skill level, and so I enjoy playing soccer more than the thing that I have a lower skill level at that I don't enjoy so much, tennis. It's not surprising. The one that we enjoy more is the one that we're better at, which is the one that we practice. Which means that those of you who are my readers and those of you who are my writer or who are my watchers, you were that thing because you do that more often. The people who said, yeah, watching movies is easier. My guess is you watch more movies and TV shows than you do read books. My viewers were like, my peoples? Oh. My people who said, yeah, you know what? Reading's easier. Well, guess what? They read more. It shouldn't be a surprise to you that the stuff that you practice more is the stuff that you're going to be better at, which means it's usually the stuff that you're going to enjoy the most. So, nobody was wrong in this. What's easier, reading a book or watching a movie? It's your opinion. It's your opinion. But as we discussed, we started noticing that the only reason one was easier than the other was not necessarily the how that was involved, it was the why. I do this more, I do this more, so I like this or I like this. Makes sense, okay? But I'm about to show you that no matter if you think you're a bad reader or not, you are a reader, and you know how to use this stuff, and I'm gonna show you by using math. Oh no, Mr. Kaz, math, yes, math. Relax. I promise this will make sense to you. See, because what we do as teachers sometimes is we get so worked up 
by all these tests and stuff that you guys have to do well on. We want you to succeed as teachers. And so we want you to feel success. We want you to taste success. And the way that, unfortunately, the education system has been going, you feel success by a number on a page. Well, I think that's wrong. I think it's much easier to taste success through enjoyment, through being fulfilled by the activity that you're doing. That, to me, is the real win. That's success. And so I'm going to approach things a little bit differently. My guess is that you know about literary elements and plot structure and all of this stuff, these processes and context clues and blah, 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 blah. The reason you know about that is because you were told to memorize it a whole bunch. You were told to look for it in these little tiny little pieces and parts, and you weren't ever shown the big picture. Now, that's not really what we're after here. See... If I had never seen a basketball game before, basketball is about to start off, so I'm excited about that too. We talked about this in class too. If I had never ever seen a basketball game before, and I didn't know what basketball was, and I was like, you know what, I'm going to go to a basketball practice. And I walked in the gym, and I never saw the game, never knew, don't know anything about it, and the person who was going to teach me handed me a basketball and said, okay, dribble 100 times with your right hand. Okay, now dribble 100 times with your left hand. Okay, now dribble 100 times with your right hand. Okay, now dribble 100 times with your left hand. Okay, now I'll dribble 100 times going back and forth between your hands. I'm going to look at basketball and I'm going to go, that's stupid. Because I don't know what the game looks like. Well, if I could see the game, then I could know why I'm practicing the dribbling. Do you think NBA players spend an awful lot of time in the practice getting coached how to dribble? No. They just do it now. They don't even have to think about it. Well, the same thing with my great uh, movie watchers and TV show watchers. And my great readers, the people who are really good at it, you don't even think about the thinking that you're doing anymore. But I'm going to show you that writing and reading is the same thing. I'm going to give you the basketball game of the writing and reading process. See, because you're not really sure yet what you're doing all these little individual skills for. I'm about to show you. The point of this is enjoyment, so please sit back. Here is the math equation I was going to go with. That's a true statement. Okay? We need to check my math using an easy number. Okay, we're going to replace x with a number to check my math. You got 1 plus 1 equals 2 times 1. You got 2 equals 2. My math checks out. Okay? So that's true. But we wouldn't be able to understand how to read this multiplication if we didn't first understand the concept of addition. See, what happens here is this is the same exact thing, it's just expressed differently. Here, we are writing out. Here, we are reading and interpreting and understanding. Get ready. I'm about to blow your mind. Strap on your pampers, because the thing that happens after you blow your mind is you poop your pants. So just strap them on. Here we go. You ready for this? I would like to tell you that this equation is also true. Writing equals reading. I'm going to show you what I mean. See, when we were writing last week and the week before that, we knew that we needed to start off, our overall goal is to connect to a reader. But we know that our reader cannot possibly connect to us if they don't first understand us. In order for them to understand us, we need to make sure that we follow the writer's process and that our writing encompasses the six plus one traits of writing. That's why we go through the writer's process. So that process and those traits are really what wind up on the page. Well, the page is the only thing that's set up in front of the reader, right? I mean, you don't rub the book and magically the author appears like a genie and says, oh, here's what I meant by that. I just want to help you understand that so you can connect to it. It doesn't happen. All we get is the book itself. Well, guess what? When you're sitting down to read, that's what you're reading is the process and the traits. And you read the process and the traits in hopes of understanding. Well, you try to understand because ultimately... You want to connect and learn something. You want to make a connection. This is what writing and reading is all about. 
But we wouldn't be able to understand either if we didn't understand both and how they work together. Connection is at the core of this whole writing and reading thing. And I would even argue that watching is the same thing. Because remember, that all is written. You're just getting the words delivered to you by somebody who's already interpreted it. So you're still getting the process and traits. It's just you're, you're experiencing it differently. And so what I want you to remember as we go into this what makes a quality reader unit, I want you to remember that you already know how to do all of this stuff. You've been connecting, you've been predicting, you've been using context clues even in movies. Now wait, Mr. Kaz, uh-uh, I haven't been doing that. Context clues, really? Context clues? Yes, you've been using context clues. Anytime you use the overall color or brightness of the picture, and the mood of the music to inform how you're supposed to feel about what you're watching, to infer, would you say, what you should be feeling, you are using the context clues to infer. Sometimes you're using to predict. You take in characters and situations and you relate to them. You're connecting. Guys, these are all the things that we're supposed to be doing as quality readers. You already know how to do them. My goal for you is throughout the course of this year, what we're going to do is we're going to focus on the enjoyment. Because I don't care what you get on a test, guys. I don't care what you get on a test. I really don't care what your scores are. I want you to put in your best effort. I'm not saying don't put in your best effort. I'm saying put in your best effort at enjoying this, at learning how to enjoy and pick up a book and read. Because you don't know how to read. I mean, you know how to read, but you don't know how to read. You don't know how to have a conversation with an author and really get something out of it that can change your life. That's our goal for this unit. That's what we talked about as a whole today. We're going to start filling in our note sheets tomorrow. But that's what I want you to get from this introductory lesson that we had today in class. See you tomorrow. Have a great day.